this podium does not hold drinks. I know. Very well. Unacceptable. Um, in my classroom, my podium holds my drink. Never mind. First of all, cheers and thank you. Cheers. I just like, laughed down and was a bad move. Thank you for having me. This is such an honor, you guys. Oh, Jesus. Um, to be here and hang out with you guys. Beautiful, beautiful audience. Um, as Rachel said, I'm absolutely um, thrilled to be here and I've never done it before. You know, my normal lecture crowd is under 18. So, wow. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. I can use the F word if I want to, but I'm probably not gonna. You know, just saying, because I'm so proper. My, my shirt, it's very high necked and stuff. No cleavage here. I'm a teacher, damn it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, booze and spirits, tipsy tales from the Whole Rook Hotel. This hotel is the Whole Rook Hotel. Is everyone listening? Because I'm hearing a lot of chatter. If you're listening, say, Hi, Miss Yens. Hi, Miss Yens. That's what I do with my kids. Okay. Um, so, but. Anyway, booze and spirits. Um, yeah, lots of booze going on here. As you know, you're holding drinks. There's a bar here. This is the Iron Door Bar. Beautifully, historically lovely and renovated in all sorts of fancy fashions. Notice the walls. These are original walls here, people. Okay, uh, moving on. I want to get over to this slide, which is the year in which our story starts. It's 1852, beautiful year, lots of amazing clothes. I wasn't, I, I wanted to wear a corset tonight, but if I do, I just cannot breathe. And it's like hard to talk. But anyway, what happened in 1852? This is a little trick I stole from Rachel when I looked at her little video of her odd salon talk. Anyway, so to bring you into the context of the year in which we're speaking, um, this is the year that the first Chinese arrived in Hawaii. These are the same people that built basically the whole town that we live in and the railroad that crosses the country. Thank you, Chinese people. Um, this is also the year that um, Mrs. Beecher Stowe wrote her famous book. Does anyone know the title of that book? Uncle Tom's Cabin. Thank you, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Is your name Tom, by the way? No. Okay, just thought. Maybe there was a connection. Not, not only that, but I'm a southerner. So Yay! Welcome, southerners. Anyone else a southerner here? No? Okay. Um, what? His last name is Cabin? Cabin, perhaps. Oh, cool. Uh, this is the year, now this is a great point of interest for the history geeks in the room, which is everyone, probably raise your hand. Um, California Historical Society was founded in 1852. Yay! And um, by the way, I joined the, Nash the Historical Society of the county, so you guys should all totally join that. It's pretty rad. Um, and also, this is the year the Na Napoleon Bonaparte, that was kind of Italian. It wasn't <laughs> um, he uh, called himself the Emperor of all things French. Actually, I just made that up. But. Um, and also, this woman, Emma Snodgrass. Hello, I'm Miss Snodgrass. <laughs> Imagine if that was your last name. <laughs> Um, she was arrested in Boston in this year. For what? Does anyone know Emma Snodgrass? For freaking? For twerking? Uh, for wearing pants. Is that loud? Sorry. For wearing pants. I know. She's a regular lady of the night. But, uh, moving on. 1852 is now over, and we're going to start with the whole book. Uh, Grass Valley has always been an attractor uh, to um, rough and tumble types, body and tawdry types, thieving, gambling, whoring, drunks, oh, and the like. I know, it's look around you. I mean, well, it's here. Oh, it's here. thank you for coming. Sorry. Sorry. Really? Um, thanks. Anyway, it started out kind of in a situation like this. Actually, this is the picture of the very first. Where's the projector? This is what I do in my classroom. I kind of <laughs> <laughs> that one right there um, was the Golden Gate Saloon. 
Yes. Upstairs. It's still there and it's fucking rad. I love that bar. And I... Oops. Um, I love that bar. I love that bar mainly because of the ambiance, the expensive drinks, and um, the beautiful music that happens when my friends sing there on occasion, and it's rad. Anyway, let's go hang out there and party there later. It'll be awesome. Um, so the Holbrook starts as a very sorry, wood, sorry, not the Holbrook, the Golden Gate Saloon starts as a really sorry wooden shack, which is then burnt down in 1855, along with the rest of Grass Valley, um, which was awesome. But then they got the great invention of bricks, so, and stones. They started building up the city from that. Um, and geez, I mean, it worked out. This place is not burnt down yet, so great. Uh, and then it becomes something like this. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Um, oh, wait, I'm on the next one. Yes, next one. Uh, 1855, rebuilt with bricks at, as the beauty it is today. Uh, the Golden Gate Saloon, we're talking about still. Um, and then in 1862, the Exchange Hotel was then built around the Golden Gate Saloon and encompassed it. It became then the Golden Gate Saloon. It actually still was, sorry. Uh, so then in 1879, uh, Dan Holbrook, the man himself, bought the exchange. Is anyone named Dan here? Is there Dan? No? Okay. There's some Daves. I know there's lots of Daves. There's some really cute Paul Cozorts, my brother. Anyway. Um, so he purchased the hotel for $12,000. How much did you pay for it, Ian? Just make it public. Uh, more than that. <laughs> 12 million? Is that? No, I don't know. I am really not a math teacher, that's why I'm on this podium right now. <laughs> okay, so $12,000, a lot of money. It was a good whole, maybe, day salary for Lola Montez. Yeah. <laughs> She's a whore. In the 30s, we're going to skip a whole really far ahead in time right now to the 1930s because there was not a whole lot going on except for happy times at the Holbrook. And then in the 1930s, actually way more happy times because it was a speakeasy. There was absolutely no attention paid in this community, in the whole of Nevada County, to either, uh, what's that word, prohibition? <laughs> or the Great Depression. Why was that, people? Can anyone tell me that? Why? Why? Gold, brother. Amen. Gold is awesome, and it makes the world go round. Thank you. I like gold. You can pay me in gold. Oh, wait, I have a funny anecdote. Is that okay? Am I going to? Okay. Uh, early rules of the house, Ian. How much has this changed? Um, guests without baggage are required to pay in advance. What the hell does that even mean? Um, persons having a fire in their room will be charged extra. Guests um, burning gas after 12 a.m., the witching hour, will be charged extra. Also, board and lodging weekly cost $12. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I don't want to cry. Uh, board and room daily. That's like food and drinks or whatever included in your little... Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I, it was a ghost. I ghosted that. That's part of my later speech. Uh, board and room daily was $1.50 uh, up to 3 bucks. which, whoa, that really broke the bank. But not for Lola. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay, so now we're gonna skip way ahead more to the 50s. The 50s were freaking killer. Notice I didn't use that other word. Um, this is really funny because this is an actual little note that was, you know, kind of in the paper. Where did I get this? Doris Foley Library. Google. That place is the shit. I love it. I ran into my friend Chris Ward there. It was really funny. We're such geeks, such geeks. Um, any, anyway, food was obviously illegal in 1954 at the Holbrook because what happened? I want to read this to you. Oh, I can look right. All right, no, that's too small. The Golden Gate Saloon, having paid the penalty of the law for keeping a restaurant bad, why? Uh, is now trying to secure a respectable living by billiards? <laughs> Such a cool game. Billiards is that, that English game with the red balls and they, whack, they go all over the place. It's not pool, anyway. So, anyway, it, it involves a whole lot of gambling. So, uh, yeah, that's respectable. Woo! 
Um, so anyway, the whole road blah, 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 becomes the headquarters for pleasure and amusement in 1954. It still is! Look around you! Ian's gonna do a little sexy dance for us. Okay. Number, slide number seven. This is the modern Hillbrook that thanks to, um, what's her name? Arletta Douglas. She's pretty cute. I bet she had a great bun somewhere up here. Um, in 1972, she worked really hard to restore the Hillbrook to its um, modern glory. And Jesus, it's so beautiful. Wow. And uh, it's actually a California landmark um, number 914. Thank you, Arletta. We love you. Um, the authentic steel balcony and all, a lot of the other little touches, especially in the bar, were restored to their original glory and beauty, which we are now basking in. Thank you. And to date, point of interest, don't ever forget this, the Golden Gate Saloon is the oldest continuously operating bar west of the Mississippi. Uh, let's keep it that way. Sure. I'm proposing a toast to the Holbrook right now. <laughs> to the Holbrook. Oh, I, okay. This is taking a really long time, and I'm sorry. It was way faster when I read it in the car. Ah, <laughs> oh, Christmas. Think about your most happy memory of Christmas, you guys. It involves snow, most likely running between bars here in town puking somewhere in some gutter, I don't know. That's at least the last Christmas I had. Oh, don't you just love it. The food, the festivities, the drunk frolicking in the snow. That was my note for that. Okay, now we're gonna do a little fun partying. Um, don't walk away, Rachel, because I need your help. Well, most Californians during Christmas uh, did something like this, singing this song. I'm gonna sing it for you and then we're gonna sing it together, okay, ready? Ready? Where, oh, where are you tonight? Where Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another, you was gone. <laughs> That song's from Hee Haw. Everyone remember that show? <laughs> so <now. laughs> it's so fucking cool, that show. Can we uh, sing it all together now as a class? Ready? I'll lead, because I'm the teacher. Here we go. Where, oh, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another and we still gone. Oh, you guys are great. Woo! I really screwed up the popping process now. But anyway, my story was most Californians did this on Christmas. However, people in the Holbrook did this. <laughs> that was the cleavage that I'm not wearing tonight. Uh, or they did it like this, which is the modern day version of my previous song. Isn't that so gorgeous? Technicolor. This is some, I especially like this guy. <laughs> He's like, really? I bet Ian, you could dress up like this guy on Christmas. Okay, so what I really want to get down to with this whole deal is, um, oh god, I got really scared for a second. Ooh, it's all good, because now we're at food, and what's better than that? Um, okay, so this is the menu around, not around, on uh, Christmas. 1888, the height of Holbrook fashion. And uh, everybody's attending, everyone's having a marvelous time here, just being so corsety and corseted. <laughs> anyway, this was this is the menu. Are you guys ready? It's really good. Spiced wine. Yeah. Oysters with wine. Lentil soup and bread. 
wine. <laughs> Striped gas and potato with wine. <laughs> Turkey and chestnut stuffing with wine. <laughs> Venison with wine. Well with lime, corn and beans, those don't get wine. <laughs> Greens and olive oil, also no wine. Okay, then vinegar and salt with wine. I just added that one on there. Um, frozen royal dainties, cake, cheese, fruit, coffee, and cigars all laced with wine, whatever that means. <laughs> Seriously, it said laced with wine, which sounds pretty good. I like wine with my lace. Um, <laughs> I'll pull back my hair so you guys can see my laced with wine color. Okay, this is the best part. Are you guys ready? You've been waiting the whole time for this part. Haunting. Yes. And rooms of note. This is the part where you're gonna slurp down the dregs of your drink and lean really forward because I'm gonna talk really quietly about ghost stuff. Okay, first of all, this, um, this next ghost, oh wait, that's not a ghost, <laughs> who is that? That's Wolfwalk! How did she get in here? Oh, why did she haunt? She's a ghost. Exactly. She deserves it. No, she haunts our memories. Her beauty. Or room 12. Or, exactly, room 12. Okay, so, let me go to the next slide. But oh, wait, that's not a ghost. What the, who's that? That's Lola. She's still haunting us. Anyway, I'm going to read two about ghosts here. Um, room number nine's Victorian ghost was once most likely a maid. She wears a long, dark gown that has a bun on, a, and has a bun on top of her head. <laughs> she has clothing fetish. And she will arrange all of your garments neatly, folding them for you and putting them away in the drawers and cupboards. Just like a whore. Just like a whore. She would. She straightens. Yes, this is room number nine. Sorry. I'm staying in room number nine. Oh my God. Who's the lucky man? You guys are hella fine and stuff. And I hope you get your clothes folded. And perhaps a little mini, I don't know, can a ghost give a hand job? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, she straightens the sheets while you're sleeping. That's what I was meaning. <laughs> um, the ghosts, uh, this is actually really recently. Serious folks, seriously. Um, the ghosts, they were there, okay? The ghost recently hung up a lady officer's uniforms and set out all of her makeup for her. True story! Okay? I know. The next slide's hella creepy. Don't be afraid. I will hold your hand. Creepy! Oh, that's my older Lola slide. Never mind. Okay. No more Lola pop-ups. Um, it said also that, I don't know which room this is, and this actually isn't a room. This is a hallway in which three children, now how they know it's three, I don't know. I mean, that's, you hear two kids, you hear 10 kids. It all sounds like a bunch of kids. So how do they know that it's three children? Anyway, that's what's written here from the Doris Foley Library. Um, they run up and down the hall, laughing, giggling, whispering in the midnight hour. Um, people, now this is really close to home because it happens right in that bathroom. Room. Uh, people have heard their own name being called uh, or had a tap on the shoulder in the bathroom downstairs. Actually, I heard that when I was in there, but it was my creepy friends. Like, creepy <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was you. Um, this happens in room 15. Who's staying in room 15? Anyone? Yes. Um, I, I will stay in room 15 if I can get a room tonight. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Room 15, a cigar box floats around and sound and music emanate from that room. Um, also, a violent doorknob twists and rattles like mad um, on one of the rooms. I don't know which one. Play all of them. <laughs> and then we've got this guy whose name happens to be Charlie. Charlie the ghost hangs out in the iron door. This very bar... <laughs> Oh. There he is! Oh no, it's Dave. It's Dave. It's cool. 
Um, he hangs out in the ladies' room. Also, he's a, I know. <laughs> I was like, who's touching my underwear? <laughs> he's an aged man with a striped shirt, boots, and spurs, leaning. Most likely leaning somewhere. Maybe he only has one leg. I don't know. <laughs> um, also upstairs in the dining area, table 15, two men have been seen sitting at the table counting money. One with a pencil tucked behind his ear, dressed in the height of historical fashion. I'm assuming that would be 1880s fashion. Um, also, there's a blonde woman who is seen going up and down the stairways in the upstairs hallway. Okay? You didn't know this, but there's a beautiful glass elevator, and you can really annoy the hell out of everyone here if you just ride it up and down all the time. It's really fun. <laughs> so if you want to go up and see that hallway, just ride the elevator up and then ride it back down. Um, there's the app. Did I already say the flowery dress person? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Apparition of a woman in flowery dress seen in several areas of the kitchen. Weird. Maybe she's a flower lady or something. Oh, next slide. Okay, so that was Charlie, or my impression of Charlie. I don't know if that's actually Charlie. It is now. It is now. Um, here is a lady descending the lower stairs, uh, ascending these lower stairs, ascending. She's got a long dark dress, although it's white in this picture. I don't know why, maybe they just have like Photoshop reverse thing, you know what I mean? Invert. Um, she's probably a whore, just saying. Whore. I know, where are you guys? Um, she ascends the lower stairs regularly, and that's just outside. Okay, just outside. Um, then there's this gentleman who wears a top hat. He took it off for this picture. Um, he's a well-dressed gentleman in a top hat. He takes his paper in the dining room, or he'll descend the upper flight to the lobby. And I was imagining that maybe they're like star-crossed ghost ethereal lovers and they're like eternally damned and they have to keep climbing or descending stairs but they never really meet. Aww. I know, I was crying. Wow. Anyway, and you made it moving up. on. <laughs> Happier notes. Happier notes. Oh, wait. <laughs> Suicide and broken dreams. Okay. <laughs> True stuff, peeps. Um, suicide is real. It's happened in this very hotel. Sad. So true. I almost sang that same song you did, right? <laughs> Sad but true. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to steal that. Okay, so violent storms shaking the whole region, crazy chaos in the sky, raining hellish snowballs down upon the area. On April 19th, 1927, when the headlines broke with this title, Hallucination. Whoops. Why can't I read my... You're hallucinating. <laughs> oh, I just now realized what the word is. Sorry. I'll start over. Hallucination causes traveler to end life. 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 Um, so this poor guy, Jack Martin, professional gambler? Miner? Um, horror, drunker, whatever, um, guy um, is so insane. He is like totally um, going crazy. He is kind of a wishy-washy guy hanging out in Grass Valley sometimes, and then he'll sometimes move away. Kind of he'll like hop on a boat and go to England. A lot of us sure. have married a guy kind of like this. Whatever. Um, anyway, he uh, was a guy that was sincerely sad and baffled. And on this evening, he had had enough of the world and he took his straight razor, licked it, and slit his own throat. His own throat, behind two locked doors. The doctor had to climb through the window to get his body. Well, probably unlock the door for the other side, or whatever. But they had to get a stretcher in there somehow, I don't know. It was pretty funny at the time. Anyway, I wanted to share with you, and I think we should do a unison read of his suicide note. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so I've got a copy of that right here. It is hysterical. I, we could either have one volunteer or a group read. Let's vote. Volunteer? Group read. Group read. Okay. Now, if you are not close enough, I need you to get really close, though. Thank you. 
about. I don't know if I can zoom it in a little bit. Oh, geez, I'm gonna have to read it for you. This is okay. true. Can I turn around? No. Okay, well, I'm going to read it for you. And if I stumble through the words, it's because it's really cracked out, okay? Um, um, yeah, note left in Holbrook Hotel by suicide victim. Remember, this is 1927, so things were a little different. Um, watch, oh, okay, quoting right now. Start, letter. The watch on the suitcase is Bob Cruz's. Comma, Boston Ravine. Return to him, Eddie. I loan 15 cents on it. He's probably from Camptonville. Totally. <laughs> they don't have punctuation up there. Um, I don't know what's wrong. Some capital body done me wrong. The money I got, I made in playing poker, and the money I got on me, I took to England and capital brought capital back again. I never done any wrong. This could be like a blues song almost. <laughs> Should I sing it? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. Somebody done me wrong. Okay, end of story. Anyway, the man put me to sign a paper when I went to get my something out. I never read it and they done me in. I'm I am going to end it all. He did. They have wronged me. I should never been here if I thought trouble. Suddenly he is Russian. Um, nobody told me but can see it thought. I think this is good through. See it thought. Um, that fellow watching me on the capital boat, and I've been watched all the time. I don't know what the trouble is. Nobody told me anything. I never stole no money, and I know all more than I worked for playing poker with a man whose name is James. James. Rachel James. She's not a man, just kidding. Um, J. Martin, goodbye. Spelling B-Y, whatever. Uh, sorry anything like this happened. Goodbye, all. You will think better of me after finding the truth. <laughs> and then he died um, by way of suicide. Did I mention that? Anyway, that's his note. Isn't that so creative? I love that note. I was like, I have to read that to the class. Um, anyway, these are really recent and crazy things that have been going on. So I titled this little section, I've Heard Tell of Late, because it's kind of a 40s thing to say even though we're in the 1800s. So whatever. <laughs> Photographers try to capture the image of a man in the upper middle window frame. The man is on the outside of the window, like, hovering. And these people are in the stairwell, stairwell like, looking up. So the guy's floating around, trying to photograph that guy. Obviously, I didn't get it because I couldn't find a picture. Um, chairs and furniture are piled up askew just outside that iron door. Like, giant heaps of all the chairs, like, we can do that. thrown. We could, we could make a party of that, people. Anyway, that's happened a lot of times, and also really recently, as recently as 2011, I believe, or six, I can't remember which one. Um, anyway, um, according to the manager and the worker, there was nobody downstairs at all that whole day. Okay? I'm moving on to my final slide in which I'm going to be departing from your presence in a moment. Um, March 13th, sadly it was Thursday the 13th and not Friday the 13th, lame. Um, on 2014, this, this year, um, Ghost Posse Incorporated from Nevada. <laughs> it's so funny, I don't know why. <laughs> Ghost Posse from Nevada. <laughs> it's like, L-O-P or something. I always make fun of my kids because they like to dress like little gangsters, but I teach in Lake of the Pines where there's like no gangsters. So I'm like, oh dude, you're from the hood of L-O-P. That's so tough. Anyway, they get really mad and then they pull their pants up and put their belts on. And like, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. Anyways, March 13th of this year, now I cannot confirm nor deny that this happened, although it was published in the newspaper, 
I believe that it did happen. Um, anyway, Ghost Posse <laughs> in Nevada. They are a Nevada-based nonprofit organization. Um, they booked all the 17 rooms in the whole damn Kabuda, or what how do you say that? Hotel, I guess. And they held a ghost in investigation, and for $20, you could join and find ghosts yourself. And um, with that, I want to say good night and good ghost hunting. Adieu and cheers once again. Yeah. Cheers once again to the Holbrook and all my beautiful people. Yeah. Bye.